Hey everybody, I'm Tiffany from Colin Pop and I am here with the incredible Cullen Bunn over at the Valiant booth ready to chat about some comics. Cullen, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I want to ask you, what is it that attracts you to a project or a story? What, what is it that really excites you about something? <laughs> well, back, you know, a few years ago it would have been they offered it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, but now I, I you know, I kind of, I, I, I want to, to pick work that I think I can really bring something to, that okay. I can, that, that you know, my writing sensibilities will add something and elevate the project. Mm -hmm. uh, and and like I said, and that was that was just a little bit of a joke. I really would at one time, I would not have turned down any work probably. <laughs> you know, and and uh, the me, you know, 15 year old me. There have been projects in the last year that I've turned down that the 15 year old me would have said, "What are you thinking?" <laughs> but what I was thinking is, it's just not the right book for me. Someone else could do that book, uh, do a better job with that book. Um, and so I really want books that uh, that that I think I can add something to. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that it speaks to my sort of my brand, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that is. Right, right. But uh, so it, that's really what it is. I, I love that. Um, along the same lines, then, in characters, what what is your favorite type of character to write currently? Because I know right. they can shift over time. Well, that you know. That's pretty much been the a standard. I, I always gravitate towards characters who operate in a, a morally gray area. Okay. Uh, sometimes full on dark areas. Yeah. And so I, I always, uh, I'm drawn to those kind of characters. Darker characters, characters with uh, maybe a horror edge or, mm -hmm. or more violent edge or anti-heroes. Those se seem to be the ones that I, I feel like I can do the best job with. Okay, oh no, absolutely. Now I know you've had a lot of experience with a lot of different companies, writing a lot of different characters, a lot of different stories. You did mention the horror elements, and yes. I know there are some horror areas of the Valiant universe. Are we going to be seeing any horror elements leaking into your upcoming project, Roku? So I did Punk Mambo for Valiant, right? And and that had a lot. That was absolutely 100% supernatural horror, right? Uh, Roku has some horror elements, but it is much more of a uh, an action. Okay. You know, it's high octane. Yeah. You know, high octane action. Uh, it's it's a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some horror elements, and there are some characters who uh, we're introducing several new characters. Some that are really, really bad. I mean, really evil. Yeah. That could operate in in a horror book in a very you know very easily, and maybe they'll show up at somewhere else and down the down the line. Oh, that's fantastic. Now I know Roku is going to be a four issue mini series. Yes. Do you prefer to write a mini, or do you prefer the ongoing? I love ongoing series. I love to be able to really sink my teeth into a long story. Mm -hmm. um, but in some cases, you know, it, it, it depends on what the story calls for. And with Roku, I felt, you know, definitely the first four issue arc. That's what it needed. Um, that's not to say there might not be another Roku okay. or another one, uh, you know, so it almost could become like a series of miniseries sure. or this, it, maybe, it, it, you know, the response is there, it could become an ongoing Roku series. Right. But uh, I love, I love ongoing series, but, you know, it's nice to be able to get into the story and get out of the story and leave. I definitely leave some uh, kernels for the, for the future. Okay, though. that's exciting. So what do you love about Roku? What is it about her that is so enticing? So. Roku's cool because she has really no memory of who she was, right? And that gives me a lot of room to, to play, even in a story that's just, you know, action, action, action. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, of hints at Roku's past. Yeah. There are characters from Roku's past that she doesn't remember that are popping up. Right. Um, she's she's always been a villain character or a supporting character, mm -hmm. but this is her book, so right. I was able to really dig into to her as a character and really showcase her. She's not really playing back up to any other existing Valiant superhero. Right. This is She is in the spotlight here. Uh, and I'm able to introduce an entire new world, really. There's there's a lot of villains and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, adversaries that Roku's facing. Some sometimes you only get a little glimpse of them, okay. you know, a few panels. But uh, but but I'm really trying to do a story that uh, that even even those few panels, yeah. you get to you get to maybe hints at a bigger world. Yeah, no, I, I love that type of storytelling where you don't need to necessarily tell them every single moment that happened. It's already there. You you can you can get it, and then later on. Maybe we'll see that if you, could, you know if yeah. you guys go out and pick this up. No ninja. No ninja. Oh wow, no that's exciting. I was I was very 
I, I, I was I, I, I thought about that long and hard, but uh -huh. I really thought is this going to be her story? Yeah. Ninjak needs to kind of st not. He's he, I don't know that we even mentioned Ninjak. That's that fantastic book, so, though. Yeah. I mean, I think that really gives her an opportunity to grow, as you mentioned. Right. So anything else coming down the pipe for uh, Valiant? <laughs> there? I mean, we're doing four issues. You've already written for them before. Do you have any dream projects that you'd like to tackle with the do. universe? I do. I do have some some dream Valiant projects, and then I have some sort of. I have a not even it, some of these dreams aren't even just you know character or book specific. I have some some big ideas uh, when it comes to Valiant. Okay. However, I cannot tell you about. Them. All right, all but, right. Which is good news. <laughs> I can't. The fact that I can't talk about them is good news for me. Yes. Uh, and I think there'll, there'll be some exciting stuff down the line. I can't wait. I honestly can't wait. Before we go, I think we should definitely talk about the artist. I don't want to butcher their name for Roku. I don't either. <laughs> Ramon. Box? That's it. You okay. got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, How is that relationship, writer artist relationship? It's really good. You know, I've worked with Ramon before at mm -hmm. other in other projects. So when uh, when they when they said when they they told me he was going to be the artist, I got really excited because I knew what I was going to get. I knew that that uh, that he could handle the kind of uh, the kind of story we were telling. Yeah. And uh, and and I knew there was you know. We just have a very good relationship. I know when he takes these pages, when I get them in my emails, it's an exciting day for me because he's, there's just so many cool things. I was, you know, there's a lot going on on these pages because Roku, she's a, you know, she's a ninja, she's telepathic, she can move, she's a contortionist, and she has hair that can, you know, the yeah. living hair. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in yeah. any single panel with Roku. Oh yeah. Uh, but but yeah, Ramon was he just nailed it. Everyone, really you know, nasty. the first and and, and the, I joke jokingly on Twitter a while back. I said I just asked an artist to do like six decapitations and <laughs> and you know a dozen dismemberments in in the, in the course of five pages. And and I was like, that's that's Ramon drawing that. So yeah. and and I think he likes it. You know, that's and, what's important. And I and I also you know I mentioned earlier how you know in, there are characters that we're showing that are showing up maybe sometimes just for a few panels. Yeah. But uh, a lot of that falls on Ramon to make those characters really pop and interesting enough that I would love for people to reading this book to say I saw those characters in three panels I really want to know more about yeah. them and Ramon is is doing a lot of that. That's phenomenal. I think having a really strong artist writer relationship is really important. Yeah. I think in books where that's not present it's kind of felt sometimes. Yeah. So the fact that you guys already have a working relationship going into this it's not like you're starting cold. Yeah. Like, and and I can tell he's having it it, it, it it seems like he's having a lot of fun with these pages. Right. I really feel like your your tweet should really be on the back of the book. I, I really yeah. I, th I, feel like I think we should just list point. it. We should just list all the yeah. the, the bodily harm that's I, going to be I, inflicted. I'm, yeah. I mean like I was already interested. I'm more interested yeah. now after hearing this. That could just be a variant cover. <laughs> that's just a list. Helen, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and chatting about Roku, about comics in general. I'm really excited for the mini coming out for issue number one coming out October 30th. You guys should go pick it up. You heard it here. Decapitations, dismemberments, living hair. I, I think this is like an obvious pickup. I, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just I'm just biased. I'm Tiffany from Comic Pop. Thanks for watching.